Okay, uh, today I want to just give you a brief video on a topic that's uh, very important for solving these uh, systems that we've been talking about in class, and that is degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom is a type of analysis, it's pretty quick analysis, that we can perform on a system of equations to determine whether we can actually solve that system of equations. So not in reality, not every time we have a unit or process we're, we're looking at, not every time can we solve it to get our own known variables. It may happen that we just don't have enough information, and degrees of freedom is what helps us determine that. So degrees of freedom, I'm just writing this DOF, is equal to number of unknowns minus number independent equations. So if we know the number of unknowns and the number of independent equations, you just can use this quick formula to find out the degrees of freedom. If it's equal to zero, it's solvable. Greater than zero, not solvable. And then less than zero, maybe solvable. And let me just give you a, a quick example of, of this type of analysis. And also I need to talk about independent. So if we have, um, let me just write this out, 2x plus y is equal to 3. We can't solve that equation for x and y. We have one equation, two unknowns. So degrees of freedom is equal to 2 minus 1 equals 1. So we can't solve it. There's, there's no way that we can mathematically solve for x and y. However, if we have a second equation, let me say 3x plus 9 equals 4, we now have two equations, these two right here, equation number 1, equation number 2, two unknowns, we can go ahead and solve it. So this is just a trivial algebra problem, but degrees of freedom in now is equal to 2 minus 2 equals 0, check. We can go ahead and solve it. Let me just say that if the degrees of freedom is less than one or less than zero, meaning we have more equations than unknowns, we may be able to solve it, or we may not. It just depends on the type of equations we have, uh, but I'm not going to get into that right now. I mention one other thing is the in number of or the concept of independent equations. So, not all equations that you can write down are independent. So 2x plus 2y equals 2, and x plus y equals 1. Those are two equations, but they're not independent of each other. So I'll just put this. This is equation 1. This is equation 2. So equation 2 is equal to 2 times equation 1. So if you were to just take equation 2, multiply it by 2, we'd get back equation 1. So they're not independent equations. On the other hand, x plus y equals 17, that is an independent equation. So if we coupled this equation here with one of these two equations, that would be two independent equations. So in this case, we could solve for x and y if we had this equation and then one of these two. On the other hand, if we had both of these equations, we couldn't solve for x and y. It's impossible. So this degrees of freedom analysis is useful, again, for when we are trying to determine and solve our system. And usually, number of independent equations is equal to number of species. So if we have here some process where we have A and B, we have A and B coming out the top and the bottom, this is a separations process, and we are separating out our material. We can write out here two different independent equations because we have two species A and B. We could write a material balance on A. We could write a material balance on B. Both of those would give us a set of equations or one equation that we could solve or we could write a total balance. So this is three different equations, 
three different equations we could write. One, two, three. But only two of them are independent because it turns out that if we take the sum of material balance A plus material balance B, that equals the total balance. So we can't have three independent equations. We actually have two independent equations. So this is a key. Number of independent material balance equations is equal to the number of species. And we'll use that a lot when we're trying to analyze our problem and, and look at our degrees of freedom, whether we can solve the system we're interested in.